Okay, this is Brandon OBH, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the Vault of Horror. Um, made my EC Comics. Uh, this is a reprint, I believe, um, printed in 1991 by uh, Russ Cochran and uh, his Gladstone team. And I believe it's originally printed in 1953, it says so in here, 1953, and there's also um, some stories from Weird Fantasy in this issue too, they kind of made it like a combination issue. Um, and there's like a little biography on Wally Wood, famous artist from the EC era. And uh, the first story here is called uh, Whirlpool by the Vault Keeper. And uh, I think it's pretty much just about like a woman who's being followed how, from these faces and she just keeps seeing things and she's trying to escape things in her own mind, I guess. And, uh, you know, she's seeing things like a, a man picking her up and throwing her in boiling water and then the next point she's freezing in here and she's just hearing voices, hearing laughing. She feels like she's being chased by something. Um, yeah, this whole story doesn't really have much dialogue in it. It's just more uh, pictures and narration. Um, there's like a witch trying to stab her with a big needle, and this guy she thinks is going to save her and ends up electrocuting her. And then the next thing you know, she's in a wall. She, the walls start closing in on her until she gets released out, and she gets found by a man takes her into a room with all these other men and these men are pretty much saying that uh, all that has been in her mind the whole time and that she's actually a patient in an insane asylum and uh, they're giving her the explanations of everything that we saw earlier like the electrocution and the and the witch with the needle trying to stab her and everything they're just saying that those were all treatments that she was getting and uh... in the next page you see that the uh... the men actually end up turning into those ghosts and faces that she was seeing before and it pretty much circles back to how it was in the beginning starts all over again that's the end of that one and uh... the next story is i think a really good one called out of his head and it's about this uh, man who murders his friend uh, out in the middle of nowhere while they're camping. So no one really knows where they are. I don't know why he murders him, actually. I think there's a specific reason. But after he plunges the cleaver into his head, he gives him, like, this look. As you can see right there, like, this really scary look. And then he doesn't die at first, but then he finally stumbles down and dies. And so he leaves. He's going back home. And, um, he goes back to his home early in the morning, and he keeps seeing his friend, uh, like, everywhere he looks. It's like his, his ghost is haunting him. He sees him out on the balcony there. He sees him closer, and he tries closing his eyes and biting his fingers, and it doesn't work. And, uh, he just keeps seeing him again and again. It just, just doesn't go away. And, uh, yeah, it's great art right here. I think it's by Jack Davis. Yeah, I believe it's Jack Davis. So he keeps seeing this, his friend's ghost everywhere. He's trying to get a drink. Maybe I'll make it better, but it's not working. He still sees him. <laughs> and, uh, he even puts a blindfold on, tries walking around. He's like looking for cigarettes or something like that, but he ends up spilling the cigarettes everywhere. And he takes off the blindfold, and as soon as he takes takes it off, he's his friend on the floor there. And then he finally comes to the conclusion that he should just pluck his eye out, his eyes out, both his eyes out with ice pick. So he does it, and he goes blind. And I think, think like days later, he wakes up in the hospital with new eyes. And the first thing he sees is like this shimmering light in front of him. And then he just says, oh, Lord, no, and he runs away, and he says, there's there's another way, Stanley, there's another way, and he actually jumps out the window and commits suicide, but the shiny, uh, the shiny light that he saw was just really a doctor trying to help him, and that's the end of that story. That was a pretty good one.
I like how it's just kind of like a a ghost or a zombie. It just continues to to hunt him. You know, it's very uh, very classic horror in in my opinion. I really like it. This next one's called an ample sample. This one's really really interesting and kind of funny. Um, it's about this guy who's borrowing his neighbor's tools and he's giving them back and he's telling him why he borrowed the tools and it, and it ends up that he's like telling him a story about his wife and uh, he's telling the story from the beginning when he got married to his wife and she was like all beautiful and they were in love when they were first married and they bought a ha they bought that house and and then the wife started getting addicted to uh, the chocolates like the box of chocolates like the assorted ones she starts getting really really obsessed with them and uh, she's pretty much spending all of his money on these chocolates and it's driving him crazy because he can't save enough money for for anything at all she's just stealing his money just for chocolates and the story's kind of short because it's uh... you can describe it pretty pretty quickly here yeah so um... it ends up that he tells his uh... his uh... neighbor that he actually killed her and that's why he was borrowing his tools so he made a giant uh... chocolate box with her body parts in there you can see all that stuff it's all labeled in there pretty quirky ending pretty sick too if you ask me like i understand why these comic books were uh... really looked down upon by parents because of stuff like that's actually pretty pretty crazy and uh... this next one is called funeral disease this is a great one I like this one. Pretty much about this old guy. He's uh he's the um the gardener of this man right here. Uh, Mr. Fairchild is his name. He's the gardener and he's really crazy about saving money. And uh Mr. Fairchild guy, he uh his business is going under, so he needs a plan. He needs a lot of money quick and fast. So he ta he talks to his gardener and his gardener mentions that um he wants to save his money for a proper funeral one day because his father was um I guess murdered or, or killed or something like that and uh... yeah it shows him earlier in his life going to his father's funeral and it just looked like he didn't um... he wasn't buried properly and nobody really cared so this gardener he just that's all he wants he just wants a funeral a nice decent funeral and then, uh, but Mr. Fairchild, he doesn't really care what he's talking about. He just really wants his money because he doesn't want his business to go under. So he finds a way to uh, to kill the old gardener. And he, like, stuffs him with a pillow or something. I don't know how, how exactly he kills him. I guess it says that a pillow came crashing down on his face, snuffing the air out of his life. I don't know. Anyway, but he, he kills him, and then they bury him just the way that his father was buried just like an old pine box you know not a proper funeral at all and I guess the corpse of the gardener knew about that and so he came back from the grave Ping came back from the grave and came for Mr. Fairchild and there he is showing up right there and he kills Mr. Fairchild and he actually takes Mr. Fairchild's body out of his casket throws Mr. Fairchild in the old dirty pit that the gardener was once in and Mr. and the, the gardener actually takes his place and gets in his coffin so he finally has the proper funeral that he always wanted and that's the end of that story that's it uh, the rest of the the rest of this is uh, like weird fantasy but this is my favorite vault of horror one this one has like uh, I like the cover too the cover art is just amazing with Johnny Craig's art you know the the red cover uh the colors the way the art looks is just great it's amazing uh it's just a wonderful comic and uh if there's still any available online i suggest you get them uh they're really good things to start to start reading anyway that concludes this